Hey everybody, what's up? Happy Wooly Wednesday. It's Marie here at Living Felt. Wherever you are, I hope you'll say hi and where you're from. You are here on our live stream. Maybe you're watching live, maybe you're watching the playback, and we just wanna say welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to be here with you. For those who have just stumbled across our stream, I'm gonna show you really quick uh, what we are doing today, and then we're gonna say hi to a few people and check in. So just a quick look at today's projects. We have made ourselves some handmade felt. This is what we made together last week. This is the same piece. And today we are turning that into some artful and fun gifts that you can keep, share, give away, or even sell. So thank you so much for joining us on our broadcast today. And whether you're watching the replay or you're watching live, I just wanna say hi and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I wanna say hi to a few folks. Now, uh, for those of you who are here joining us, I know that many of you are in our group, um, Facebook friends, so or Facebook friends, haha, <laughs> Living Felt friends. So let me share that for those who are just coming across. This is where we hang out all week long and every Everyone this week has been gathering things on a treasure hunt leading up to today. Uh, you might also follow us on Instagram, uh, which is just at Living Felt, and you can find us there. So, uh, and for those of you who are brand brand new, have no idea what you're doing. Everything that we're sharing with you today came from supplies from our shop, Living Felt. And last week we played together in our live broadcast and we made this piece of handmade felt. So if you missed that video, if you didn't get to see it, let me pop that up here. Whoops, uh, let me make it a little bit smaller for you. Pop it up here so you can see, look for that video so you know how to make this thing that I'm holding right here. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. I wanna say hi to a few people. Let me just check in and see if I can see you. And man, I'm just so excited for you to be here today because I've been watching you all make your handmade pieces of fabric and share them in our Facebook group and they are just so exciting. So I see here, here's Karen. She says she's gonna try wet felting for sure. That's awesome. Linda is in New Brunswick, Canada. There's Elaine in South Carolina. Pam in Wisconsin says it's snowing. Can you believe? So here in the US, I know we've had some crazy weather. It's like sweater weather here where we've had heat waves in April before. Um, there's Ula all the way in Sweden. Nan says hi to Marie and the fairies and they all say hi to everyone is working so diligently to get your orders out thank you all so much for felting with us it's just so exciting for us to see what you make there's Victoria in Northern California Joan in Tennessee Audrey's in the UK Michelle Fleming is here Stephanie Laseco in Indiana hey y'all oh who we have here I just saw um, there's Mandy is all the way in the UK and everybody is here. Nan says it's her first Wooly Wednesday. That is so awesome. Well, so I just gave you a quick preview at what we're making. I call these little treasures. Um, let me show them to you real quick again. I call them uh, mini prayer flags, well wishers, and love notes. And this is what we're going to be making today. Now, I know a few of you are a little afraid to cut up your handmade felt. Um, because you probably fell in love with it just like I did with my first piece too. But for those of you who are feeling brave, I'm going to show you how you can cut it up and um, get over a little bit of the hurdle <laughs> of some, some of the bravery and how you can maybe get past that. So I have a technique for it. And um, we've been on a little bit of a treasure hunt. I'm going to show you the supplies you need to sit down and play with these ideas. And really it's about gathering what you have and making the most of what you can find right where you are. This is very much a felter in place <laughs> project. So for those of you who have made your handmade felt, if you're watching live, you can post it in the chat window. If you're watching the playback, post down below, hashtag felter in place, and that will let us know that you made your handmade fabric. I want to share just a few um, fun, oh, and just a couple, because there have been many, many postings on our Facebook group 
And even on Instagram tagging us of people who participated in the scavenger hunt this last week. And the scavenger hunt was really about gathering up things in your studio to bring to today. So little bits and pieces. So let's see how I do this. Here we go. Here's just a couple of people that gathered up stuff. This is Stephanie Williams. Look at her felt and all of her treats. Oh, let's see if I'm gonna get it to play through. Will it play for me? Okay, so this is Elsa Lucemore. She's in the UK. This is Brenda Nelson's grab. Um, and this is Kathy Hurst. I love all these colors. And then this is Kevin Lawrence. And then we're gonna end up back where we started with Stephanie Williams, that's so awesome. So it's just been so fun for me to see what everyone has been gathering and I'm gonna share with you the supplies we need. So if you're ready to play today, give us an I'm ready in the chat or in the comment down below. And if you're excited about today's video, we'll hope you reach down there, not off to the side, but down there, give us a little thumbs up and let us know you're ready. And at any point, if we share something that's new or something that you want to try or maybe you have a favorite takeaway leave it in the comments down below so we we get an idea of what's fun for you um, okay so I'm gonna turn down here we're gonna look uh, well let's look at these pieces just a little bit more and then I'll bring in the supplies that we're gonna be working with today to make them okay so I love making these little tiny pieces and I'm going to zoom in just a pinch here for us. These little pieces can be just so therapeutic to work on and make and I call these mini prayer flags and so prayer flags are something maybe from another tradition that you might have heard of and the flags would have little prayers on them and you would hang them in the wind and as they get tattered they're said to you know spread those prayers across the land going to villages and towns but you know you could wear them too or you could put it on your refrigerator as a little magnet and really I just think of them as little love notes little blessings little well wishers something you can hang or something you could wear. So this is an example. Here's two examples of things you can wear. And I'll zoom in just a little bit more. And this one is, uh, some of you know I asked you to bring safety pins. So this is a fun way. This is just a, this is just like a bead actually. This is a little safety pin uh, brooch or prayer flag that you could wear or a love note or well wisher, whatever you like to call it. This one is on a bar pin magnet, and so I sewed the second piece underneath a piece of uh, just wool felt under there. And um, these just have a little embroidery. This one has a little needle felt on it. And um, yeah, or you could even stick this on your refrigerator if you want, or on a filing cabinet or something. This one has not been finished offset yet, so you can see the back. And you can see, you know, just all my stitching. I accidentally got a piece of fabric caught in there, which is kind of funny. <laughs> so, um, and I've just sewed some beads on and done some embroidery, which we'll do today as well. This one is made on a lapel pin or hat pin, whichever you like to call it. So it's just loose, but I thought you could stick this into a little plant or a silk plant or even a little pin cushion and make it like a little, a little desktop prayer flag or you could even, it could even be two-sided. I decided not to make mine two-sided because I was kind of limited in what I had left <laughs> of, of my piece. I didn't want to cut up the piece that I brought in to do with you all um, until we came together. And then this one right here is just a little example um, of a piece in the works. And I like to very often back them uh, back them with a little piece of felt or some other fabric. So let me look here and see what you all um, what you all have to say. Um, so it says, Karen says, do the sides need to be stitched or are they fine the way they are? And I'm going to say that that's really up to you whether you decide to stitch the sides. Now this one I made on a white felt and I wanted to show you that even though you might have some exposed edge from a white felt, a white pre-felt was the base, um, once you stitch it down 
and you anchor it to something underneath that can just disappear so it's really up to you and they you know this you can see is kind of um, see how it's kind of blocked and open usually when we cut handmade felt we then do what's called healing the edge which is to felt that edge down but this project really wasn't designed to be treated that way and so you really don't need to worry about it but you might find that if you decorate it with beads and stitching and such that you do want to stitch it down so it's what it's anchored on to something else and of course there are other ways you can attach them down you could heat bond them or whatever but let's look at some ply, some supplies and I'm gonna watch for a few more questions let's see Cheryl says is pre felt the squares you buy in the shop so let me show you this um, Cheryl pre felt is actually unfelted pre felt is not felted whereas felt is felt so we let me grab this we are working with, my backing is um, is uh, wool felt, so this is 100% wool felt. You usually won't find this at the craft store. This is more of a specialty product. The stuff you find at the craft store is usually a lot thinner. It might be a polyester, it might be an acrylic, it might even be a plastic. And this is a little bit thicker. It's just what I prefer to work with. A pre-felt is actually unfelted. Um, or it's partially felted so it doesn't have integrity on its own and you can watch the video from last week that I mentioned earlier this is a pre felt this is a very fine merino that has been needle punched into a lightweight fabric and if we wanted we could just tear it apart so it does not have integrity on its own what we did in this project was we laid down a pre felt base and then we covered the pre-felt with all manner of fibers, merino top, merino silk blends, etc. Um, and wet felted it to create our very own handmade felt. So for those of you who missed last week, I'll show you really quickly. These, let's see if I can get it under the camera. These are the fibers we used. I'll back up one more. Uh, these are the fibers that we used, merino tops, Angelina fibers, yarns, here's the pre-felts, um, silk hankies, tussa silk, viscose, bamboo, wool neps, all manner of goodies. We used this stuff right here to make this fabric. And this has become a piece of, we just called it artful felt fabric that you can cut and turn into other stuff. So this is 100% original. You're never gonna buy that anywhere. Um, and the stuff you make with it is just gonna really wow people. Okay, so I'm gonna look for a few of your questions here. And thank you so much for participating along. Um, some of you know we um, give away prizes at the end of the show. And all you have to do to be entered to win a prize is contribute to the conversation. What we've been doing the last few weeks, we're going to do again, and that is we'll give away a couple of prizes at the end of the live show for people who've contributed over here in the chat window. You need a Google account or a YouTube account to do that and to be entered for the replay, then leave your comments down below in those comments, and then in a few days, we'll do a drawing, and those people will win prizes too. Cool. Um... Let's see. I'm going to see what a few of you say. Um, Karen says, prayer flags. What a wonderful idea. I will do them as necklaces. Great idea. And I'm going to show you some findings uh, that I have. You can make a pin or a necklace out of that. Um, Liz Mosher says, make a quiet hanging gizmo for your porch. Oh, that's right. It would be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've made tw heart twizzlers before. Great big wet felted heart twizzlers. And that this may be on our YouTube, uh, I mean on our Facebook somewhere. Jackie says she likes the pincushion idea. 
Jennifer says, I have a ton of burlap. Can I use burlap for some of the backings with the stitches hold? Oh yes, Jennifer, it's, burlap's a great idea. In fact, our Fiber Arts Guild often um, creates like a big burlap kind of canvas, if you will. They stretch it over bars. And then when we do shows and they introduce people to fiber art, they just put up the burlap and bring out a bunch of embroidery floss and then teach kids or whomever passes by how to do some variety of stitches right onto the burlap. So your embroidery floss will probably hold, but your sewing thread might be challenged. You can put a piece of fabric in between if you need something else to help bind it down, something with a tighter weave. Um, Let's see, Nancy says, can you explain healing the edge? So Nancy, I think I touched on that a little bit, but healing the edge is when we cut a piece of felt, as I showed you, and I'll try and hold it up to this camera here. When we cut a piece of felt, um, what happens is, whereas this edge right here, if you look at this edge, see how it's just sealed all the way down? When you cut a piece of felt that's made out of layers of fibers, what you do is you expose those layers. It's kind of like cutting into a cake. You know, the cake bakes its edges all around, but once you cut it up, then those edges are frayed. Even with bread, bread kind of has like a little crust on it, but then when you cut it, that inner is exposed. So to heal an edge of a piece of felt, like let's say you're making a pair of slippers or even a hat and you trim part of the wool off, what we do is we wet felt that edge and it goes from being a blunt like a blunt edge to being tapered and by felting it you cause it to taper rather than be blunt like this and that's what healing the edge means um okay misty bear says she's thinking about making an eyeglass case and i wanted to suggest so if anyone doesn't want to go the way we go today we can also even together look at some other projects you can make with your handmade felt because one of the things I wanted to do with this project, besides help give you some ideas of ways you can make some little gems that would really can really go a long way to brighten someone's day, whether you give them or wear them or sell them, doesn't matter. And it's a very relaxing, therapeutic project to do yourself. Um, but also is to introduce the idea that you can make your own handmade felt and sew it into other stuff, lots of other stuff. And an eyeglass case is one really great example um, and faith mother goddess what is your real name faith mother goddess just a first name is fine <laughs> that's a long one to say but I'll remember if you tell me uh, do you use tailor scissors or normal ones so I use fabric scissors or a rotary cutter just fabric scissors or a rotary cutter is fine and then Lisa says can you lay down your fiber without the pre felt so you have pattern on both sides Lisa absolutely you can but I would say to go ahead and do two layers because you want this you know this is already thin even though we have the pre felt you know as the backing so in place of the pre felt do two layers of merino top so that you have some nice integrity even if you decide to back it with some um, felt or other fabric. So on that note, I will keep an eye out for your questions and let us um, look at a few of the tools and supplies that everyone has been gathering. And so for the first one, I'm just going to pull out a few uh, findings and I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see. For those of you who didn't participate Participate. I'll show you what I brought today and it's pretty simple stuff so I brought some uh, key rings who knows why I buy these things and I just have them around key rings large and small safety pins even some interesting ones and I've lost one somewhere but I save them when I get them on clothing do you do you save your stuff when you get them um, on your clothing or whatever comes it's fun to kind of save those things. This is just a T-bar uh, magnet and I have some of these coming in so I know it's hard to get out and craft right now but it basically it's like two bars and then these little magnet dudes that will slide around and um, what I do is just sew one of the bars in and leave one of the bars out and that way you can have a brooch or a pin without having to poke a hole into whatever it is, a coat, a sweater, or a hat. And then this little guy we do have in the shop right now, you, we used him on our koala head 
pins and you can either make a pin or a necklace with it um, either one and that's just a little finding or whatever you call it bail so that you can hang a chain from it and then even just some regular magnets so again here's the keychain that I did I cut out a heart from my felt I cut out a heart from my uh, handmade felt and this is just ribbon you could use fabric you could use felt um, and I just stitched it right on in there so even keychains would be a fun thing to make all right so let's look at a few more things I had you gather up um, what was the next day I can't remember but here's here's an example of my little stash and this is just some matching threads, whatever threads or matching or contrasting threads that you might like, um, some embroidery floss in whatever colors. You might have some yarns that you've gathered up and you just need a little bit so making these little bobbins help you from pulling out you know great big wads of something especially if you just want to sit and have some quiet time sometimes it's nice to have your supplies in these little small increments that you can just pick and use from uh, and then just some yarns uh, yarns just some ribbons and I tend to save ribbons that come on whatever I get and sometimes it's not like a super respectful saving I just shove them in like a sandwich bag and then reach in there and pick out what I want but I'm interested to know how many of you also save your um, save your ribbons and stuff that come on packages you receive. Okay, the next thing was, or another thing that we were gathering were beads and broken jewelry and charms. So you don't have to be overly mm, judgmental about these things. And I want to show you, I had the fairies bring in um, some stuff from their own. Holly had the biggest haul. She brought in a mason jar, two mason jars, I think, just full of um, goodies. And I took these out of her mason jars, which is like a little tiny cloisonne um, butterfly. Just perfect. It's an, it's an earring, so it's missing its partner. And you can use it as a pin on something like this. You could even bend the back and loop it around with your needle nose pliers, which I've I'm sure I have some in here somewhere. This is another cute, uh, I don't think it's cloisonne, but it's a, just a little cat face. Um, another lonesome earring. Taking it off the earring back is going to be perfect. This thing, who knows what it was, but these were from Holly's stash, so I thought those were super cute to share. And then some things from my own. So some of you have gathered up lots of little treasures like this. Oh, maybe a button, maybe a bead, maybe a, a broken earring, something like that. I'm just going to dump them here in my bucket so we can pull from. But, like, I am the queen of losing earrings. Like, who knows where they go because I lose them in my house. I swear I do. But I always lose earrings. So if you have one of these, send it to me. <laughs> I always lose them. Okay. I want to see... Uh, Let's see, I'm going to read a few, a few of your questions that you're posting now, and I'm going to keep bringing in supplies because we have more to bring in. Oh, a note on the charms. So here are some fun charms. Now, I said not to buy anything for this project, but I wanted to get some cute charms, uh, little or large, whatever. And I told this, I got these from an Etsy seller, and I said, if you'll get these to me by the show, then I will mention your shop. <laughs> I don't even know if they understood what I was saying, but these are the little charms that I bought. And what we're going to do is, until we run out, we're going to drop one in every order starting tomorrow. So as soon as the the orders can come in today, but it'll be <laughs> it'll be every order packed from here forward, including our winners. So we're going to drop a little charm in there. And I got these from. Thank you for shipping them. Somehow first class made it. <laughs> I don't know. M and T 2007 supply on Etsy. So I'll just hold that up. So if y'all can focus on that. I don't know if the camera's focusing on it. MNT, you can look them up on Etsy. But they sent me these gem, these little charms pretty fast. And I'm going to get to just a few of your uh, questions as we go forward here. 
Um, oh, on the on the beads and buttons and stuff, don't shy away from um, jewelry that's like, I don't know, less than fancy. Some of this stuff I just got at the thrift store and I got it just be just because of the beads. Like you just can't buy beads like this. I, it was like a double necklace for, I don't know, a couple of bucks at the thrift store or these little, um, you know, stretchy bracelets. Even if you decide you're tired of them, if you save them, you might be surprised at what little gems you get. Okay, just a few more things. I asked you to bring felt and fabrics, so no surprise. Let me just spread out here a little bit. Uh, felt is definitely one of the things that I've enjoyed working with. So my suggestion for this project is felt and or denim for backings to you know add that density and the strength if you want. Um, and then some little pieces of cut fabric can also be fun to add on top or as backings or layerings or I don't know whatever so I thought these were really fun and then I suggested some white fabric and that is to go along with our next supplies um, I see AZA727200 says, I go through phases of saving things and tossing things, and I am right there with you because I told the gals here at the shop I had just cleaned out all my jewelry and gotten rid of so many things I wished I had saved. Okay, so here's the last little bit, and you'll, the white fabric goes with this. Um, I suggested that you might find some small stamps and it brings some ink pads um, Anne, Fairy Anne, brought me a white ink stamp, which to me was just a miracle. I've never seen white, the white ink. Perfect. Some little straight edges, which we're going to use. Um, I don't know if I told you to bring a pen or something, uh, but a pen or a marking device for marking on your felt will be helpful. Uh, whatever scissors you got. And um, then... I cut out some shapes. Now, I just do this kind of freehand, but I will have a handout for you for this project where you can download a few things, including some shapes to cut out. And I made like a house, a circle, a heart, and this little narrow strip, which is about an inch and a half by two and a half, I think. I'll save him out because I really like that shape. So you just want to cut shapes out of your, fab of your felt. Okay. Cool. I'm so excited. Look, here's our piece. Okay, this is what we're going to get into today. And I'll cut out some pieces, but we'll also work on the pieces that I've already started because um, we want to make good time. And I'm sure we're going to go over today like we have in recent days. Um, and let me see. Kim Zapp says, what about vintage jewelry? Oh, yeah, girl. Anything you're willing to put on your fabric is perfect. Linda Clark says... I have a wool baby blanket. Can I use it as a backing instead of the felt? Sure. I would just, you know, make a piece or two and see how you like it because we're going to go square by square. I don't do the whole thing at once. At least me. I'm not a production crafter. Uh, Karen says, do I need something to cut on? You can just use regular scissors. And Elsa says, can you use pinking shears? Oh, yes. And I didn't bring mine. Anne says, could you cut out letters for a baby birthday or hopeful message? You could really try. Um, you could really try, but you would want to have big block letters. Okay. Um, oh, I'm glad you guys like the charms. Those are sweet. Could we use a bond or stitch witchery? And I don't know what bond you're saying, but I did want to mention if you don't have felt and you want to use a fabric as a base, look at getting some kind of interfacing, uh, whether it's an iron-on, a stitch-on, a sew-on, but something uh, that you can put on the back or add to your fabric bits to give them a little more integrity. So an interfacing is fine to shore up the fabric. You know, I think you're just going to want to seal off this back and make it look nice. So consider that. Can you buy stamping ink? You can buy stamping ink made for fabric too. That's nice, Devin. You know, it's, it's uh, true. And for this project, you're not going to be washing it. Then it's probably okay. Um, I don't have stamps, Marie. Does it matter? Oh, gosh, no, Deborah, not at all. In fact, though, I meant to bring, I wanted to tell y'all if you 
don't have stamps but you still want to put words or stuff or pictures you might see if you have print on fabric at home sometimes we have stuff we even forget that we bought but you might have a print on fabric that you can run through your inkjet printer and then you can cut something out so the words are just totally an option and not required at all okay so I know some of your hearts beating you still don't want to cut up your felt and I get it and I even had a challenge cutting up uh, the last one that I shared so I'm gonna show you a way that you can do this and just kind of let go of the wheel you know and let it all happen so before we do this before we cut one thing I want to tell you you're not gonna get this wrong this is just fun you can always make more fabric and what happens when you do cut it is now you end up with these little mini canvases that you can build on and you're as soon as you do that all these ideas are going to come flooding in so I'm sure that your charms and love notes and little prayer flags are going to look different than mine your little mini blessings and everyone is going to be a unique little work of art so I just want to encourage you to have fun with this and let yourself go a little bit because no matter what you do it's going to be beautiful all right so this is handmade felt y'all this is like the real deal not a lot of people do this so if you're a felter give me a hashtag I'm a felter and if you're not well join the family we want you to <laughs> join in the fun and learn how to make your own handmade felt so here goes the the bravery test all right so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more and thank you all so much for your questions um, I'm going to jump over here and see if I can see a few uh, what can be done to make oh, let's see I want to make some other ones with specific designs in mind and you know I was very purposeful and not giving you all um, I was very purposeful and not telling you all what we were going to do because I wanted you to just have fun and play and play with the designs but this is how you might go about cutting up your piece without stressing about it um, I, there's two sizes that I like a lot I like this size which is about yeah this is the one that's an inch and a half by two and a half I love that narrow size inch and a half by two and a half and then this size I love both of these sizes this guy is just about is about is about two and a half inches square so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a two and a half inch right up right up this line about two and a half inches my fabric is not exactly even you can see so expect that to happen so I'm gonna go um, two and a half inches from here about and then all we're gonna do is just draw a line on it now you don't I look notice I didn't even scrutinize it I swear to you I don't even know what is underneath there so this is all you have to do now I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the next level and I'm gonna do my two and a half inch markings from how do I do this I'm gonna do my two and a half inch markings from here from the top can you see where I am I'll go for I'll start I'll start here from the bottom so here's two and a half inches right across here And let's do that again. There's two and a half inches. Um, if you don't have a little quilting square, uh, something you can do is just pre-measure yourself out a little piece of cardstock and use that. And I don't even know, this one's only going to be like um, smaller. Whatever. Doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So you don't need a rotary cutter. You don't need anything fancy. And oh look, just for fun, let's not even look before we cut it. How many of you are your hearts just beating right now? <laughs> are you nervous <laughs> about what we were going to do? Uh, <laughs> okay. Patricia says fabric stores for the rulers, usually the quilting section. I love getting um, I love having supplies, don't you? Okay, are you ready? Yvette says, oh geez, that's the only way to do it. Here we go, we're just gonna cut it. I'm not even worried about it being all that straight. And right away, we're gonna end up with four little canvases we can work from. And honestly, you're gonna have a whole, you know, you have a whole realm of fabric over here that you can come back to when you're ready. So we're not looking, we're not looking, we're not looking. But we will look at it in just a moment. So here we go. One. <laughs> I, I found that I was sitting in my chair trying to watch a show and I wanted to cut up my pieces 
and I couldn't even do it. I was like paralyzed. And this is what I came up with to get over that hurdle. Okay, are y'all ready? I'm gonna turn it over. Here's the big, here's the big fun. Let's see what we have. Oh, look. Look, all of a sudden you have these little mini masterpieces that we can play with. This one has blue and light green and pink and purple, orange. This has all the Angelina in it, the light green, the pink. Uh, this was our, um, oh, I can't say it. This was our silk noil. This was a wool lock, pre-felt. Uh, bamboo, neps, and the nep isn't sticking on, so what? Stitch it down. Now with the Angelina, see how hairy it is and how fuzzy it is? All I'm going to do, no, bear with me as I just blow stuff away here. Let's see, I'm going to pull out a little tray. I'm just going to trim this away and um, just get it off the piece because I don't want it to be hairy. So just trim off that Angelina that you don't want, and you could even give it a shave, you know, like this, like the parts that are sticking up like this. Just trim that off. Okay, I'm going to see what a few of you are saying, and I'll lay out our pieces again, too. I just want to get this Angelina cleaned up a little bit because it looks like the um, glitter, glitter magnet thing happening. Glitter uh, beard is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Let's see what some of you think about us cutting it from the back. Okay, there we go. So now we have some little treasures that we can design and play with together. And I think that's really fun. So when you look at, you know, something like here's a, here's a little smaller piece and here's a bigger piece. Um, and what we can do is then start to decide what color, if you have uh, some different colors of felt, maybe what color felt you like it on. Let me look and see here. So like this piece, maybe this piece you would like on orange. If that feels too hot, then maybe you would like it, uh, maybe you want to put it on the yellow. I tend to like everything on that raspberry color. So what feels more interesting to you to have it on the orange or the yellow or the raspberry and you can just play with it. See I like everything on the raspberry because the raspberry then makes all the brights pop. And I'm not overly scientific about how I cut this out. I just eyeball it. So some of you who are you know, attached to your rotary cutters, that's going to be more comfortable for you. For me, I'm like a craft in my lap kind of girl. It's hard for me. If I sit at the table, it's hard for me to get up. If I'm sitting in my lap, it's hard for me to get up because I pile everything on my lap. So, this one, for example, could be a fridge magnet or a brooch or um, whatever you like. And now that I've decided the backing and the top, then I would decide how am I going to decorate it. So a couple of the things, you can decide what's your major design element. Would you like to just put, uh, would you like to put a big charm on it? Maybe would you like, here's where the wooden stamps come in. This is a little wooden stamp wooden. This is a uh, stamp onto like a little wooden tile that I have. And this is a stamp onto one of my little bits of fabric. I think that one actually goes even better. What do y'all think? And I know that um Okay, so I'm going to, um, Nancy says she likes it on black. She might like it on black. And I, I tried black and I found myself going away from black. But just for fun, I'll hold it up for you. And someone asked, do we, so here is it on black, which is, you know, even like a little piece of, uh, you know, desk art. Maybe you put it on a little, you know, you have a little easel or a little stand or something like that would be really cute. Um, so black is definitely an option. And one of y'all asked, do we sell the felt in packs or just single? We do offer some packs. Yeah, you might, you might give it a look. Um, we have a few assortments. And um, 
I know you all have so many ideas. I love seeing all your ideas. I think it would be really fun for us to kind of do this together. <laughs> we were all sitting in the same place. So this one, uh, I have a little corner. Now what I did with these little fabrics was I cut them out and then I ran them through the washing machine because I like them to be a little bit ratty. And then I, um, then I ironed them all just in like a great big stack. So before you came on, I preloaded um, I preloaded some thread because if you've ever seen me try and thread a needle on camera, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> I'll come back just a little bit. Um, Alice Cortland says she is so analytical. She measures everything, and this is so freeing. Well, I'm so glad. Oh, Linda Repkin says, can these be run up on the sewing machine? Um, yeah, and I wanted to mention, it doesn't matter whether you like to hand stitch, and we'll get this one going, or you like to machine stitch. So um, I do like to mis machine stitch as well. Um, what I find is I usually like to be in one place or the other. So this one was uh, just stitched on the sewing machine real quickly and you can see how tidy that is. And then I have another one, this little guy, I started on the sewing machine right here and I uh, stitched him onto the safety pin right here on the sewing machine so with a safety pin in place and I stitched a little piece of denim on there as well on the sewing machine so if you want to sit at your sewing machine and just kind of crank these things out that's absolutely an option and for everyone who feels like maybe you're not skilled with sewing or stitching or whatever this project is going to be very very forgiving um, and I know that y'all will forgive the look of my hands. I've been working with a lot of cardboard the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Not really my normal desk stuff and I've trashed my hands. Okay, so um, you're just gonna wanna start at some point underneath and what you can do is, for those of you who don't know, is start and make yourself a little knot on the back first. Your felt is gonna be more loose than a, your average piece of fabric. So just make yourself a little knot right there on the back uh, knot that up and people who are more precise and exacting than me may cringe as they they watch me do this project but you know what just have fun with whatever works for you so you can just do like a little running stitch and those who are more precise are going to enjoy being more precise and those who need a little more freedom hopefully will find it in a project like this I think the wonkiness really adds to the interest but you can just do a running stitch just like that and actually get across your piece pretty quickly. So I'm going to stitch this on and read a few more of your questions. Um, and let's see what you have to say. Uh, Paula Lott says these are going to be gorgeous little canvases. Oh, I agree. Um, Kevin Noble says how about coasters and yeah these could be coasters I would be weary of the parts that are a little mm, more uneven because you don't want a, you know a glass of iced tea or something to topple over it might depend on the base and so you might really felt them really really well and also you know steam press them really really flat maybe even starch them um, what else questions I see will it needle felt down on a piece of felt no I, I if I you wanted to attach it to felt I wouldn't just needle felt it because this fabric is going to show a lot of stress marks from you punching it with a needle and wanting to punch the whole thing so instead if you want to not sew it onto a piece of felt then I would use some kind of double um, uh, the heat and bond like I showed you just a moment ago um, or even glue depending on what you're going to do with it but I wouldn't just try and needle felt it down I think that's going to be um, I think that's going to be too messy and a few of you want to see my stamps I will absolutely do that for you uh, Misty Bear fusible interfacing yes fusible interfacing will work thank you all for your questions um, I know I've missed some does the felt slip under the scissors? Asks. Um, let me see if I can find that. Audrey, I don't find that it does, but a rotary cutter does work well on the felt. So I don't think, I don't have any trouble with it slipping. Just use your nice fabric shears. Don't use your paper shears. 
Um, Okay, cool. So look, we've got our little love stamp in place. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you like it perfect, then you're going to make something perfect. And if you're like me, you like things a little bit wonky. I even like these little threads trailing down, honestly. And I wanted this fabric to fray more, but my washing machine is too gentle. Um, it doesn't have a center whatever you call it, agitator. And I have I miss getting my cut fabrics really nice and frayed. And I don't have the patience to sit and tease, tease them out. Okay, so just take a couple of knots. Now you can use the same thread, you know, to stitch this to the backing if you want and start it there. Someone asked, if you're gonna add the magnet, would you add it now? Yes is my answer. So let's say I'll use the T-bar magnet. And what's fun about these is, let me see if I can get this thing apart. Uh, what's fun about these little T-bar magnets is, let me see if I can get this thing off. I'll put them on here. Is that um, this actually has a little sticky doohickey right there. Sticky doohickey. <laughs> and... Um, just to temporarily hold it in place, if you take off that protective little fabric, the piece of paper, whatever it is, then you can just stick this right in place. And I like to go a little more towards the top. I'm going to just leave my thread right there. So just stick that a little more towards the top of your fabric, but then I'm going to go ahead and sew it into place. I like to anchor it down at least to some degree so that I know it's anchored in there and not going to shift around on me. Diane says, what size needle? Is it blunt or is it sharp? I'm just using regular hand stitching needles and embroidery needles. So they're pointy. They're not dull. Uh, they're pointy. And notice what's fun about this, it's different from fabric, is your felt is thick enough that your stitches aren't going to show through on the other side. This is another reason to make sure that you have enough layers that you can stitch through your piece and it doesn't show to the other side. If it's too paper thin, you're not going to be able to do that. And all I really want to do is anchor this thing down uh, on the two ends, if you will, and make sure it stays in place. Um, yes, A727200 says, turning it into a card is a good idea. Yes, greeting cards is what I mostly used to make, and I would just cut out little pieces and then make layered, um, layered greeting cards. And these little gifties, I think, um, wear, you know, wearables, magnets, whatever, are another option to that. You can even sew them onto cardstock. And I'm trying to remember whether we did that already this year, because I know we talked about it and I brought samples. Um, in on another show. Um, Vicki says, are the T-bars strong? Oh yes, Vicki, they're very strong. They work really well as like a brooch pin and way better than putting a hole into, you know, a nice sweater or a nice top or even a coat. Um, so there, that's all, that's all we really have to do to anchor that down. And then we can sew this piece to our felt. Well, why don't we, and that's what I would do, is I would just go around to this edge and you can, um, I just do the stitches right through the edge of the felt. So let me show you what I would do. I'll zoom in. Do I need to zoom in? I think we're probably, you guys are probably close enough. And I'm sorry that there's a little bit of shadow here, but... Hopefully that's not too nauseating to be that close. We'll just stitch a little bit so you can see. And I'll read a few more questions. Nancy says, where can I find the magnet bars? You know what, Nancy? We're going to have them in just about a week in the shop. And they'll be under like the crafting essentials. So this is what I'm going to do is just pick up the felt here and go right into. That's not even an eighth of an inch in there. Just a little bit of a margin and I'm just gonna stitch it down. Now this is what I find really relaxing, is to um, just sit in the evening and work on a little piece like this. I'm not in a rush, I'm never in a hurry. I just want to enjoy some quiet time, maybe listen to something, maybe watch something, 
and this is all I would do to seal it down. Now, maybe before we jump onto this one, we can add we can add a design element or two. But you would just stitch all the way around once you had all of your design elements on and just stitch all the way around the piece. You know, you could even decide to use a bright green thread or a yellow thread, something that would stick out a little bit more. Whatever speaks to you is really what this project is about. Um, so why don't we look at, um, well I tell you what, we'll jump to another piece um, so we can look at a few more ideas of things you can play with. But I do want to encourage you also to play with embroidery if that's new for you that might be something to play with so let's see here I brought some yellow and let's just do a couple of French knots on this piece so let me hear from you do you uh, do you do embroidery um, do you do embroidery uh, in your pieces already is that something that you like to do I know some of us really aren't all that experienced <laughs> Uh, with embroidery and so for me I'm really basic. Um, so I'm reading a few things. Uh, somebody says a blanket stitch, that's a good idea and I have something in here. I have a blanket stitch but I didn't use it for the backing so I'll hold that up before we go. Let's see, let me get into camera here. Uh, I know it's a little bit blurry but this one has a blanket stitch around the edge and if y'all want to know how to do that we can look at that too. Um, somebody said these would make good bookmarks. Y'all's comments are going by so fast. Yes, they would. Bookmarks are a really fun thing to make and you can back them as well. Nancy says, do you sell toilet paper too? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Someone says a beaded blanket stitch and I don't even know how to do a beaded blanket stitch. So I don't even know what that means. Um, Oh, Vicki says sending these to nursing homes would be nice. That's such a nice idea. Okay, so here is, I've just, all I've done is put a little knot. Let's look at doing a, a French knot, and I'll make sure that I'm on camera here so we can see. Thank you all so much for playing with me today. I wish that we could just do a, a, a crafting circle together. Okay, so I'm going to do a, a couple of French knots just for fun. Just more yellow. This piece is really bright. They should probably be green, but I didn't preload my, my green thread. So to do a French knot, you're going to bring your thread up and then pull the thread a little bit and then we're going to wrap it around our needle. So I wrapped three times on this one and then we're just going to go back in right next to the point where you came out. The, the felt is a little more open than a standard fabric so you might find that you go right back through that hole. <laughs> so you want to just scooch it over a tiny bit and then you're just going to pull the thread down all the way through and then you have a cute little French knot. You could also twist it only twice or you could do four um, to make it bigger, five, you know, whatever you want. And you could certainly mix it up and add some different colors. So let's just do one more. So the thread comes up and then like pointing towards your other hand with your needle, you wrap it around. Your, so your, let's see, let's make this one too. We'll make it smaller. So you're just gonna wrap around twice and then come back through your felt. You could certainly mix up your French knots and do them in multiple colors. So, you know, bring some more needles to the game and that one wasn't very tidy. So you can see how new I am. <laughs> Embroidery is not something I ever learned how to do um, from anyone, and I just admire so much of the embroidery work I see out there. I should spend some time learning how to do it a little more. I just like to play. Okay, one more. We'll put it in, and then we're just gonna put this little piece aside and look at a few more things. and see just some other examples of things to decorate. So I think this one will come out really fun and it's gonna be a cute little magnet, a cute little magnet work of art. Um, uh, Claire says she votes for French knots over neps because those little buggers <laughs> never stick. Seed beads uh, would be good. Um, sometimes crosses stay better than French knots. I get it. And I, like, I'm not very good at this stuff. So here's an example of uh, the, I think this is the first one that I did. Um, and I just did some little straight stitches with my embroidery floss, some little X's, um, some little 
French knots with spirally thingy and just played with it a little bit and then this is just a little charm and I anchored two beads on on the sides and then I covered it so it's the it's also a magnet piece like I showed you so th these two are, are very close um, cousins I'll spread out a little bit that might be a little close to look at and I'm just looking for your comments and appreciate you all your your feedback so much um, so while I'm going to scoot a few more things over, so maybe you'll tell us, you know, what either in the chat or down below, whether this is something that you're going to give a go, you know, have you already cut your fabric while we're sitting here talking? <laughs> How many of you have, if you've cut your fabric while we're sitting here talking, just say, I did it <laughs> either in the down below or in the chat, just say, I did it and let us know that you did. Um, yeah, so fun. And I know I know it takes a little bit of bravery to do, but it's possible. You can cut it. I swear you can. Okay, let's see here. Let's go back uh, to here. All right, so here's more, and I showed you these in the beginning. Um, this, is, this is just the same thing. The only difference is on this piece, for example, this little heart, I needle felted on top of are the felt that we made. I needle felt it on top. I stitched over it just with regular quilting thread, whatever. That's what's stitching around the edge. It's just regular quilting thread. And then I did these little loop-de-dupes with the um, embroidery floss. I don't know what they're called, but they're pretty easy to do. Um, and all, let's see if I have this loaded. Let's just do one on the piece we're working, just so you can see. It's just another option of a, of a shape. It's just something different to do. And um, all you do, let's put one over here, is you're going to come up on your piece right here. Come up in one spot. Get your other gizmos out of the way. Okay, so you're going to come up. You're going to make like a little loop. So just come straight over if you will, come straight over, I don't know, quarter of an inch or a little bit less, however tight you want it to be. Pull the thread underneath. All the embroiders are probably giving me a thumb down right now. That's okay. <laughs> this isn't the embroidery show. <laughs> this is a little mixed media project. Okay, so what you're going to do is just make a little loop and I'm going to make it a little bit tighter a little bit tighter and then we're just get, then you just make a little anchoring stitch right there at the peak of the base and it's going to be off center I can tell already and then you pull it back under and that's how you make these little somebody tell us what they're called I'm sure this stitch has a name but yours truly does not know what it is and I lost my loop here we go just keep my loop in place and pull her down. So that was a very imperfect one, but that's how you do it. <laughs> you loop it. That's how it's supposed to have been a little more peaked uh, like those. And someone will tell us what that stitch is. So if anything, this is a good project for, oh, fly stitch. Very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, wine glass charms. Well, I don't carry around a wine glass. How big were the wine glass charms be? Will they be little? Little teeny, teeny tiny ones? Um, okay, a fly stitch. I'm going to have to try. I'm going to have to work on my fly stitches. That's what I'll do tonight. I'll work on my fly stitches and add more here because I did it okay over there, but not so great here. Let's look at, um, let's look at a few more decorating things and just a few more ideas. Um, so I meant to bring in a piece of paper and I'm going to need it, but I'll use the felt instead. Um, okay. So here, uh, what we have is, uh, this is just a piece of felt. I'm just going to use it as a little background. And I suggested that you bring in white fabric for, um, stamping on. And you can also just use light colored fabric as I've shown you here. And that's what I've done with these little pieces here is just to stamp right onto those. And let me grab my stamps. Um, so I'm like a dabbler. Uh, I don't know how many of you are dabblers. I'm really a dabbler. I feel like the master of none. Somehow felting just became a passion of mine. Um, it was the first thing that I really fell, fell madly in love with besides my husband, Rodney Jean. Um, and 
so I have like bits and bits and pieces of parts, but I don't have like real in-depth stashes of anything super grand. Okay, I'm looking for my stamps. All right, um, and so I just have little pieces and parts like this little rainbow stamp pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the love in orange, and. Uh, let's do it on this little piece of fabric first. Now, yeah, it's it just, I'm working on it actually a canvas right now. So, all right, let me zoom in just a little bit for y'all. Just one or two. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp right on this little piece of quilting fabric. And why not? You know, you know, we tend to throw things away, especially little tiny bits, but look how magical that is, just adding that to a piece like this or like the other one that, that we did together. And this is a little wooden tile that I have another one. Here's another, here's a little wooden tile. And I'm sure I bought these just at the, at the craft store too. And I'm going to dab it with a little bit of red. Um, so you can just stamp right onto there. Hopefully I got it in enough of a place. There we go. Super fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so you can just, and then, you know, you could decorate on there with paint pens if you want. Put, put some little extra treatments on there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was like on this white fabric, which I did a lot of stamping on. Um, especially if you have a multicolored pad, then you can just stamp right onto there. And that's what I made a lot of those, or uh, a little heart. Uh, let's do a blue and purple, maybe something a little different. A blue and purple. Right onto there. And then you can cut these out and stitch them on your piece if you want. Now, Miss Anne, uh, Fairy Anne, some of y'all know her, she, um, her mom for a lot of years had a stamping up business and she lent me her little white ink pad, which now that I've messed up my, I messed up my stamps, I won't do. But I liked just how faded these are, even though these barely show up, these little XOs. You could even use them as a base to stitch over. So I just stamped the denim a little bit with the white ink pad. Uh, it's a Stampin' Up ink pad. Um, and you could either leave it like that, nice and faded, or you can use it as just a little tracing to stitch over. And don't be shy with your denim. You know, let your denim let your denim fly. Also, this would be a really fun cutout, and put a little charm on that too. So, for a number of years, my husband was buying these blue jeans that magically fell apart within. I don't know, I like to say six weeks. I don't know, they're expensive jeans and they always fell apart. And so they weren't even good enough to give away. And so I started, rather than just tossing them out, cutting them up and saving them back <laughs> for fabric stash, which I have a lot of now. So save back some of those little bits and pieces. I don't see the top of my, um, my st oh, there it is, my stamp. I'm gonna cover up my stamp pad before I put, put my hand in it. Um, so, okay, cool. All right, let's just look at a few more things. So we've already seen the stamping on the fabric and we already saw the, you know, the stitching on the fabric. I want to give you just a few more looks at um, some things that you might try and ways that you might um, fasten these to other bits. And let's also look at the, um, just as a last thing, let's look at the... Uh, keychain because that's a super easy thing to make and if even somebody doesn't want to wear something they might um, have a keychain or even put something special on that keychain it might be a special key or a special little charm but those are super easy to make so now that we've played with a few pieces together uh, these ones that I show you are going to make a little more sense and um, hopefully this will just serve as a bit of inspiration to get you going on playing with your own fabric if you're if you're willing to to chop it up and put it through the paces so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna share with you just a few more that we have made Okay, and I'm also going to look at a few more of your comments and see what you guys are saying. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so let's see. Who said that? I love the white on the denim. Uh, Brenda says she saves the back pockets of jeans. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Mandy says, did you trash Rodney's jeans? Uh, I have, that's for sure. Um, okay. 
these are okay cool so all right so here's what I did with the keychain now let me see if I can find my ribbon save even the tiniest bits of ribbon I was surprised that I could find a use for it but I only used about this much ribbon in this keychain and just to make it extra secure and let me make sure I'm on camera just to make it extra secure I brought it down about that far into it so Where's my scissors? I, I keep burying all my supplies under stuff. So, you know, a keychain can be round or it can be square or it could be a heart. I really do like these. Um, I really do like these little long, long shapes as well. And I cut out a fun little round shape too. Not sure what to do with that. Um, each one is like such a little work of art. And then all I did was stitch this piece in here first so I did my anchor stitches right here first and then I just sewed around the perimeter and I didn't even know what this whip stitch just a whip stitch around it's not even all that tidy but I think it's cute and I don't know why I decided not to decorate it at all and leave it plain but hey it's an option um, you can leave it plain or you can decorate it now with the um, safety pins and let's see the safety pins are fun because what you can do with a safety pin is you can decorate this part here with other beads if you want. This one is a is a long bead. Um, you could even sew this onto this part and make it go this way. But I decided to sew mine on the solid part and then you would just open this. So this could be worn, uh, it could be worn or it could just be I don't know hanging somewhere that could go on a greeting card you know you could like make your piece a gift on a greeting card however you want um, sew your beads on to your piece as much as you want I, I wanted to show you that you know to make the the little prayer flags and you could make a single prayer flag like on the safety pin or the little twizzler thingy that I made or you could make a little stream of prayer flags using any you know ribbon that you have around and um, so I decorated the piece completely. This is a piece of um, sari silk ribbon, um, just stitched right onto the bottom. Here's a orphaned earring, some French knots, a little embroidered heart. Again, the love, but this time I stitched it. I stitched denim on the piece, just with regular sewing thread, stamped on my white, and then just did some straight stitches across there. And you can see the back is all messy and still needs to be covered. So you could just do some heat and bond if you don't want to add any more stitching on top of this. Um, and this is one of those fancy little um, safety pins I was telling you about. You could just drop a charm onto that. And your pieces could even have stuff dangling down. I want to have some with fringe. You can have some charms hang hanging down the bottom. There's any number of ways you can go. And there really are no rules. Like you don't have to be looking looking in a stitching book to see what you, you need to do. You can just play and treat each piece as an individual little work of art um, and decide, is it going to be a magnet? Is it going to be... Um, oh, K Carrie says the round one looked like a seascape. And I agree, Carrie. As a matter of fact, this one, I think I want to turn into a mini landscape. I saw I cut that out and I thought that is a little landscape right there it's like the sky and the clouds and grass so I wanted to pitch out some ideas uh, before we go today and see what might you all like to make next I know this this is gonna keep you busy but what can I share with you next so this is a great opportunity to give us some ideas of what like you you would like to see I have more projects in mind for us to make with our handmade felt so if you would like more um, handmade felt projects please say that handmade felt projects you can leave it in the chat window you can leave it in the message down below if you have some projects that you've been wanting us to get to you've been hoping we would get to just remind us so it would help me greatly rather than to 
to try and read back each time through the chat. If you have project suggestions that you want to see us do on the live show, leave a comment down below. We hope you'll give uh, this video a thumbs up and let us know maybe what was your favorite takeaway, but definitely we would love to hear what are some other projects that you would like to see this year. And we'll just do our best to keep adding them to our calendar. Um, cool. Lynn says she has been cutting her felt fabric into beads and uh, into hearts and adding beads. I love that. Um, Marjolene says she's quietly working on her first piece. That's so sweet, Marjolene. I can't wait to see it. Um, more. <laughs> Hashtag more. I see. That's awesome. Handmade felt projects, other ideas, more. Pro oh, I, I see. Okay, y'all are all putting it in the chat window. Okay, so remember, please leave a comment down below. Let us know what was your favorite takeaway from today. Um, let us know your ideas for other felting projects that you want to see. This was our little mixed media sans, um, sans painting. So, uh, or adding adding paint to the project, which I don't have a lot of experience doing, adding paint to my handmade felt. But um, I guess when I think of mixed media, I often think of that paint and such. So let me see just a few more comments. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw some names. I'm going to give away um, two prizes today. Um, I'm not going to make a face mask. I see a lot of, I've, I've decided not to make a face mask. It's, the face masks have been so controversial. We are wearing face masks here at the shop though. Uh, when I'm in my office and when I'm in Wooly Wednesday, I don't have to wear it, but we are wearing face masks. And again, I want to thank, thank my friend Lori Beyer for making face masks for us. They've been really soft. Um, bookmarks. Okay, so I'm going to read through your comments. If you would, if you remember, hear me now. You've left them in the chat chat window. I'm so grateful if you would leave those comments down below. Those are going to be easier for me to see and sort. And I have a prize bucket right here. So Fairy Ann was putting all of your names in the prize bucket as you contributed to the conversation. And we're going to give away two prizes to the live show. And we're going to give away two prizes to people who leave comments down below. And usually what we do is we draw that name sometime Friday night and we'll announce it Saturday. We are going to announce that um, right here on the video. And we will also announce it in our Facebook group, which should have just popped up for you right there, uh, Living Felt Friends. So please Please join. Remember, in order to join, you need to answer the questions that are posted, but also you need to have a head and you need to have some Facebook history. We try and keep that group really clean. No spam, no links out, no outside sharing. We're really focused on the content of felting and needle felting and Nuno felting incredible, friendly, supportive group of friends there. And we hope that you'll tag us also on Instagram. If you are looking for supplies, we hope you'll shop with us. You can give us a call anytime. Our website is livingfelt.com. We are here currently during the current status of things, Monday through Friday from nine to four. If we don't answer your call, it's only because we are running to fill orders, which have been busy and we've been a bit short staffed. So if you go to check out and you're unable to finish your check out just check back later we'll reopen the cart so let me tell you what we're going to give away today we are going to give away um you're going to get four bling fibers these are the prizes you're going to get four bling fibers and by bling fibers we mean angelina wool naps tessa silk bamboo you can pick i know it's going to take a little bit of choosing um silk hankies so you'll get four bling fibers or you can just tell us what color family you want for us to pick from you from and you will get an eighth of pre-felt. So that should help get you going. And then you can add whatever merino top. You might choose a studio pack. You might choose a designer pack. These are our specialty designer packs. They come loaded with merino top, merino silk blends, the embellishment fibers, and even our signature MC1 batting, which you could use in place of the pre-felt if you want. It's just going to take just a little bit more effort to felt that will make a nice stiff base. And sometimes there's even some little pre-felt bits in here that you can add. So these are called our specialty designer packs. Our specialty designer bundles are larger. They're great big bundles. Okay, so I've talked enough. The two names I'm going to draw right now, you're going to get to choose four bling fibers and you're going to get to choose... Um, one pre-felt. Okay, I got one in my hand and I have another one in my hand. Okay, so here we go. These are our names. Wherever you are in the world, we're going to send the prize to you. So if you've never ordered from us before, 
contact us using the contact us page on our website. I have Susan Crane. Congratulations, Susan. And I have Daniela Ketchmer. I think that's how you say it, Daniela Ketchmer. Thank you all so much for participating with me today. As usual, I cannot wait to see what you make from today's project. We hope that you will tag us on Instagram. We hope that you will subscribe to our channel here. Let us know how fun it was. And if you didn't catch uh, last week's project, this is the video over there to look for. Look for that video. That's how you can make your own piece of handmade fabric. We're going to take you through it step by step. It's a long video, totally worth it. You can fast forward through it if you want. But that's how we made the handmade felt that we're working with today is following that video over there. <laughs> that's it. Okay, y'all. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. Stay well, stay safe, stay happy. I hope you are inspired inspired and we hope that you take great great care of yourself thank you for spending this time with me we appreciate you so much bye y'all bye oh.